way down into the Kidron Brook into the running water of this word right here and I want this double edged sword to get a hold of old pride by the hair of the head I wouldn't dare hurt another human being would you brother Ralph you gave your life to help children to help people you wouldn't put a physical knife to nobody's throat like some of these crazy religious people do but yourself in a prayer closet you can get this double edged scalpel right here and say come here old pride and get old pride by the hair of the head, lift them old bug eyes up, and while pride saying no, no, the Holy Ghost is saying yes, yes, and brother, take this sword and decapitate that pride. That's what Elijah was doing. Get rid of lust. Get rid of temptation. He went to war against the enemy. That's what he did, and our enemy is Satan. It's not physical, but Ephesians says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers of darkness. So there they were. Then you talk about more power. My goodness, you can read it right there. She's got the verses for you. How long hold you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. People answered not a word. But then it was God that answered by fire. And then on only fire, then the wind started blowing. And the rain of refreshing started falling. Before the rain ever fell, Elijah said to Ahab, you better hurry on back to Jezreel because I hear the sound and of abundance of rain. And you can just scroll those scriptures and let people glance at them while we're trying to relate this story as the Holy Ghost will allow me to do it. Now, Elijah went running through the rain. There had been people starving. There had been little babies starving. There had been children starving. And that rain meant a restoration. Can you imagine with me just a second running down the Jezreel Highway? There's a little mama perhaps hypothetically comes out and her yard is all brown, not a blade of grass in it. Her well's been dried for a year or more. She's been struggling just to keep her children alive. That's what the false gods of this world will do. That's what that meth will do. You know, it affects a lot more than you, dear heart. And you say, well, I'll go to church. You're just putting a churchy cloak over a problem that ain't a church in the world can solve. Well, I'll go to rehabilitation. That's good. That's good. But there ain't a psychologist alive that can do anything with these false gods. But I'm here to tell you there is a man. (laughs) And he can bring the rain to where you live. Mama's standing there. I see a little old baby, a little old young and about two years old. If you've been to third world countries on mission trips, you've seen them, missionaries, see it all the time. Dehydration, starvation, their little bellies stick out, they swell. And their little old navel protrude, little navels protrude. And it's a horrible sight to see. Little human skeletons with a little skin stretched over them. And they're standing there dying as they're breathing. And without any hope. But now Mama's standing there and tears of joy running. She lifts her head back and sticks her tongue out like a youngin' in a rain. <laughs> Letting them big old goblets of rain just hit on her parched tongue. And she's telling the youngins, youngins, it's a raining after three and a half years. It's a raining, it's a raining. I believe the Lord God Jehovah's back in business. I believe his man Elijah done won that contest on Carmel. Because look up a row, youngins, at that black little figure coming down yonder. And there old hairy bearded Elijah was a high step and running them 19 miles. Praise God, a running in the rain. That's the side you want to be on. When, Elijah, when Moses and Joshua came down from Sinai and the people were all naked dancing around the golden calf and God spoke through Moses and Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? 
Let him identify. I don't care where you've been yesterday, but I'm worried about where you are right now. If you've been on the wrong side yesterday, it's time to cross over to the right side today. I'm talking about somebody right here, right now, that can change your life for the rest of your life. He can wash away yesterday, give you today and a future. And don't ever let your future be determined by the mistakes of your past. But the mercy of God can erase the past and offer you a wondrous new future by moving into your life as you invite him and let him and then respond to him today. Well, you know her threats the next day scared poor Elijah dead. Now let's get this lesson real quick. Just because I'm on the mountain today, that don't mean I'm going to stay there tomorrow. Life gets tough. Sometimes you can get ambushed by the devil without any warning whatsoever. You can be walking along a little pathway and next thing you know, some little imp's hiding up in that tree camouflage. He done got you around the neck with a Chinese stroke hole with one of his blooming old uh, uh, sharp uh, uh, thumbnails running from plum up behind your eyeball. <laughs> He's taking your breath and your sight. What are you going to do with that little varmint? Well, glory to God, I tell you what a sheep will do. <laughs> that little varmint would never make it from the limb to my neck until my shepherd done took him out with a rod <laughs> and a stone. <laughs> but sometimes we wonder, don't we? And we get out there on the fringes and we're doing pretty good yesterday, but somebody done made us mad today. Somebody done hurt our feelings today. We thought we were doing good and somebody took it upon themselves as a divine calling to tell you how low down you are. <laughs> and I don't care who you are, but that affects you, does it not? So he goes to Beersheba all the way in the south of Israel from the north of Israel and then goes out in the journey, journeys out in the wilderness. As we said last week, he got under a juniper tree and that wasn't nothing but sagebrush. He was burning up, dehydrating, but that didn't take away the... Uh, 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 heat well, no way so what he was uh, hiding under wasn't good enough wasn't, wasn't good but what was unseen underneath was used for fuel now you need to get that lesson you said well God's letting me burn up no God's just letting you get stoked up it's what we learn when things aren't going good that we never forget it's really difficult to learn anything when everything's going exactly like you want it to go and when everything's going the way I want it to go, but it's when things are in adversity. So the roots of those old juniper trees, the Bedouin people, used for fire and for fuel. So there he was under that juniper tree, and he laid that back, and then he got woke up by a divine presence. And Christophany, if you will, the angel of the Lord, which was none other than an Old Testament appearance of Christ and the Holy Spirit had him some bed baked in a, baked in a cruise of water. Here that water is again. There's the presence of the Lamb and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that we celebrate by taking the Lord's Supper. And you're welcome to do that anytime. It's right back there in the communion chapel. Don't say much about it, but the bread and the grape juice back there all the time. Before you leave today, you can go out there and celebrate your reception of Christ by ingesting that piece of bread into your life. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And his blood perpetuates the propitiation that he is. He is the propitiation of our sins. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me my sins. Can't you see that out there in that wilderness under that juniper tree? You thought the devil drug you out there to kill you? No, God led you out there to give you new life. So thank that person that caused a little chaos in your life. As long as they just drive you to the rock that's higher than you are, he went back to sleep. God will give you rest in the midst of your fears. He slept out there. Jezebel had soldiers. She had trained trackers. But Elijah slept.